My name is Chris. You can call me Chris, and that'll be just fine. I work for a company called AT&T. Has anybody ever heard of AT&T? Okay. It's the, in case you haven't heard of it, it's the world's largest telecommunications company. Okay? Just so you know. About 10 years ago, I started a new job at AT&T. And I started as one of those guys you see out climbing the telephone poles. Have you ever seen the lumberjacks that wear those things on their legs? I took a job being a pole climbing phone guy. I was afraid of heights. That was an issue for me. I was afraid of heights, but I prayed, God, I need a job that will take care of me and my family. I need a job that will provide for us. And God provided a job. So I took the job, and the first day I show up at pole climbing school to learn how to climb telephone poles, I got these things strapped on my leg. I got this big belt wrapped around my waist. And all of a sudden, I remembered, I'm afraid of heights. Not a big fan. So I'm standing at the base of this pole, and I said, God, you got me into this. You're going to get me through this. And I remember to this day praying that prayer. And don't you know, I ended up enjoying climbing telephone poles. It was a blast. It was amazing how, much, how that works. But while I was in pole climbing school, I learned these elements to what happens when you go to climb a telephone pole. The first thing you have to do is you have to locate the right telephone pole. Okay? And that may sound funny, but I have climbed the wrong telephone pole. The second thing you have to do is you have to go up the telephone pole. You can stand on the ground all you want, and you can stare up 20 feet in the air, and you can say, gosh, I wish that work was done up there, but you have to go up the telephone pole. The third thing I learned is that you have to hang on to the telephone pole. And I learned, this, uh, I learned this a very hard way. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna find out that there are some principles that, that let play into our faith. And I call these principles the three E principles. The three E's of our faith also are found in these principles. Are you ready for these? See, what I found, I just wanted to make this artsy. I thought it would look cool if I did red over gold, and now I'm questioning that. Anyway, so I, f I found out that the first thing you have to do is establish the right pole to climb. Wow, I can paint fast. Look at that. <laughs> you have to establish the right pole. I was... I was I was out on a job one day, and I walked up to this, po to this pole, and there's all this vegetation growing around this pole. And I mean, the vegetation was up to about 12 feet high. All I saw was this big, huge, like, say, the middle section of this court, just covered with vegetation. And I'm looking for the telephone pole, and I'm like, uh oh, uh oh, there it is. It's up in the middle of that stuff. Now, what they taught us in school is that you were supposed to cut all that stuff out of your way. You were supposed to cut a way to clear the pole. But I was in a hurry didn't feel like doing that. So what I did, I went right to the middle of the pole, you know, I'm like crashed my way through, and I pushed myself to the middle of the pole, and I climbed up, just pushing my way up through all this vegetation, just clearing it out of the way. And I got up to the top of the pole that I had established was the right pole, and I did my work, I started to climb down, and then I figured out why they told us to cut the stuff out of the way. Because you can't see where your feet need to go to climb back down. So I'm sitting there looking like an idiot, but looking down at my feet going, oh my gosh, how am I going to get down this pole? I can't see the pole. So I start pushing. I start, you know, I've got one leg, imagine, in a pole. Now I weigh 250 pounds. So imagine what gravity does to that, okay? So I'm on, I'm on this pole. I've got my little, my little gaff in the pole, and I start kicking the stuff out of the way with the other leg. And I climb down a little bit and I start kicking this stuff out of my way. And as I'm going down, it's getting thicker and thicker and thicker. And I start concentrating on the foot that's not in the pole, and I start, con I stop I start concentrating on the, on the leg that's doing the kicking. Lost my concentration on the foot that's in the pole. Do you get where I'm going with this? Yeah. 
the other thing they teach you in pole climbing school is that gravity wins every time. So my gaff comes out, I start this very short but epic battle against gravity. I smack against the ground, and at that moment, something occurred to me. There was a life lesson in this. The first is, look around and see if anybody saw you do anything stupid. So I got up immediately, looked around, nobody saw me. It was cool. I had to gather up all my tools because I bounced. Just to you know, clear that up, 250 pounds, you do bounce. And all my tools bounced out with me, and I had to go gather them up. But I started to realize that there are some direct connections between our life of faith and how we deal with the muck and the mire and the stuff that comes into our life. I was distracted and I fell. And there's another story in the Bible of somebody else that was distracted by a serpent and they fell. They fell from perfection. So let's talk about this established thing. The first, listen to this guys, you young guys especially, the first and most important step you can ever take in your faith walk is this establish one. And when I say establish, how many of you guys have parents that go to church? You go to church every week, yeah? It's just something you do, right? How many of you guys have parents that go to different church functions? You know, they, they have something going on at church, the doors are open, you're there, right? At some point, I want you to think about Am I here? Am I involved in Royal Rangers? Am I involved in my youth group? Am I involved in church on Sunday mornings because my dad and mom took me there? Because my grandma and grandpa took me there, whoever you're with? Or am I there because I want to be? Who knows John 3.16? Raise your hand. Let's all say it together. For God so... Later on in, in the book of John, Jesus says, I, not me, Chris, but Jesus, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. These are two of the cornerstones of our faith. This is how we establish our faith. I want you guys to remind me. We're going to come back to the established thing in a minute, okay? We're going to talk about a, separate, a second thing. We're going to talk about Escalate. Come on, guys. Give me, some, give me a round of applause. The second thing we learned, the first thing we learned in pole climbing school, you had, to climb, you had to establish the right pole. The second thing we learned in pole climbing school is you have to climb the pole. Growing up, I grew up in Germantown, Ohio. Does anybody know where Germantown is? Okay. I grew up in Germantown on a farm. And we had this old barn that had a hayloft, and had, it was like an old barn, like from the 1800s, you know, it has all of these cracks in it and stuff. And I grew up going up into that hayloft just to find that crack that I hadn't looked through, to see things from a new perspective. I'd, I'd climb up into the hayloft, and, you know, it'd be a beautiful sunny day outside, and you can see the rays shining through the dust. And I would just try to find something new that I hadn't seen about our farm, just to look at it from a different perspective. I used to love to climb trees. Well, I still like to climb trees, but people look at you funny when you're 35 climbing trees, you know? Oh, wait a minute, I'm 39. How old am I? I can't do math very well. I want to be real honest with you guys. What would happen if people stopped exploring? What would happen if we didn't keep exploring things? What would happen if the first guy who saw an egg drop out of a, out of a chicken and went over and said, boy, I bet that would go good with toast? What would happen? What would happen if, if Alexander Graham Bell had stopped his research and said, you know what, telegraph's good enough. We can just tap away Morse code all day long. But he said, no, we have to do something different with these wires. What would happen if we stopped exploring our faith? What would happen if we just stopped? You know, there's a lot of people in our society that don't understand what it means to be a follower of Jesus. They think they do. They claim that title of Christian. But the word Christian means follower of Christ. 
or pursuer of Christ or chaser of Christ. I want you to ask a tough question. Have I stopped chasing Jesus? Have I just prayed the prayer, God come into my life, and now I'm set? Or am I trying to figure out what's the next level stuff? What does Jesus want with my life? You know, I, I, I run into people from time to time that think they have all the answers. You ever run into those guys? They're, they're called a know-it-all. And I don't mean to be judgmental, guys. I'm just discerning, okay? But you run into those guys that know everything. And I think the danger in that is we stop exploring. We stop asking questions. We stop trying to figure out what's going on with this Jesus guy. We, try to, we stop trying to figure out what does he want me to do with my life. Now I need, where's Commander Dave? Commander Dave? Can you come up here please? Now Commander Dave, you, you know how to drill a hole, right? You can drill a hole? I'm going to prove to these guys that we have been given amazing tools in the kingdom of God. Okay? Now I'm going to read 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 through 4. And in that time, I want you to drill a hole in that board. All right, you ready? His divine power has given us... Nope, don't touch that drill. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature having escaped the corruption of the world caused by evil desires. I beat him. Okay, you can stop. Can you give Dave an amazing round of applause? Now, we're going to do it again. Now, I want you to drill a hole, Dave. I want you to hear this verse again. Only this time it's going to be quieter. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who has called us by his own glory and goodness. <laughs> through these he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature having escaped the corruption of the world caused by evil desires. Are you not done yet? No, you're not. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ready? Set? Go. His divine power. Put the drill in forward, Dave. <laughs> this part of the skit was only supposed to last like a minute, man. <laughs> His divine power has given us everything. Did you see that? Do you see what happened when Dave had the right tools? For the job I asked him to do. Did you see how that worked out? You're done. Somebody come up and pick Dave up. He's kind of having trouble. Okay, there he goes. All right. Our last thing we learned in pole climbing school is that you had to embrace Am I spelling it right? Yeah, okay. Oh, I'm sorry about my backside, but I assure you the front side is no better. Embrace, I heard that. I heard that. This guy's in the back. The last thing we have to do is embrace our faith. You know, at the phone company, we only had to climb to like 18, 20 feet most of the time. And there was a telephone pole down in Miamisburg down near the Sorg Opera House that I had to climb to about 35 feet. I did some serious embracing that day. If you drive by that pole, there are handprints on the back of it where I was clawing into the wood, scared to death. But I drew the short straw amongst about six of us. I'm like, well, I guess I'm going up. Let me go back to the fall that I was talking about earlier. Genesis 3, the serpent distracts Eve and by default Adam as well. They were distracted by the nonsense he was spewing. 
you remember the nonsense of the vegetation I was telling you about that caused me to fall? They had everything they could ever want, but they gave it all up for a single piece of fruit. I don't like to say apple because I'm a Macintosh fan, so I don't really like to do that. But Here's the question I want to ask you guys. Are you ready? Are you ready? This is yes? Okay. What's your fruit? What's your apple? And you may sit there and say, I ain't got no apple, Chris. I'm fine with God. He's my man. We're good. But can I throw something at you? We all have apples. We all have fruit in our life, not the kind of fruit that we like to have, but the distracting kind. We all have these things in our lives that distract us. The result, whether we want to admit to it or not, is that it brings a fall. So what happens when we don't cling to God's will? What am, what am I getting at? Where am I going with all this? I want, to, I, want to, I want to demonstrate something for you. This is you. Okay? Do I have it right side up? Yeah. This is you. Okay? I know it's a two by four. Just play with me. Okay? Just pretend. Can you pretend? Can you see yourself as this piece of wood? Okay? I should have written everybody's name on it. That would have been smarter, huh? At some point in your life, at some point in your life, life is going to come at you. The stuff of life. The serpent of life. S stuff. There are people in this room that have experienced a divorce in their family. There are people in this room that have experienced the death of a close family member. There are people in this room that have experienced someone killing your trust in them. People have hurt, right? Everybody everybody's gets hurt at some point in their life, right? Now I'm going to do something. I'm going to totally break the safety rules. I don't I don't have safety glasses on, so you guys just do not do this at home, okay? But at some point in your life Life's going to come at you. And you see how messy... You see how messy life gets? You see the mess I'm making on the floor? Now, you're doing all right, right? You're still in one piece. You're still, you still have, you, you're still clinging by a thread, right? And along comes... That final blow. Now listen, guys. If we don't... Are you ready? I'm almost done. Stay with me. Maybe I'm almost done. If you don't get quiet, I'm, I'm adding another 20 minutes. I'm going to sing or something. Okay? At some point in your life, stuff's going to come at you. And if you haven't embraced, established, or established, escalated, and embraced your faith, it's going to push you over the edge. And your life as you know it and appreciate it is going to change. Now, what's the alternative? Look, I, I replaced you. Now wait, it's not done yet. This is you. This is you who has established your faith. This is you who have embraced your faith. This is you who has, who has escalated your faith. Okay? This is you. At some point, life's going to come at you again. Are you ready for it? Have you established your faith?
Have you have you escalated your faith? Say yes. Have you embraced your faith? Just a couple more times. Are you broken? Are you near falling apart? I want to introduce you to somebody. Who is that? Check this guy out. Who's this? Jesus, who died for you, who gave everything for you. Who established on the cross that you are his. That you belong to nobody else. There's one more guy. At some point in your life, this is the one that's going to change you. Now you guys saw that board was broken. That you was broken, right? And again, at some point, life is going to come at you. I forgot, I'm right-handed. At some point, life is going to come at you. Do you see a difference in how this thing looks? I can't even see you anymore. I can't even see you Could you have survived that blow without this right here? Here's what I want you guys to remember. Can you remember this? What's this say? What's this one down here say? You guys like how I picked the Royal Ranger colors? I thought that'd be fun. What's this one? Now, let's talk about this first one. Let's talk about establishing. This is when we get really quiet. We have a decision to make. And there may be some of us who have not made this very first decision at all in our lives. And there may be some of us that have said, Jesus, I want you in my heart. I want you in my life. I want you to come into me and do those amazing things you do. And then we've left it there. And we haven't escalated it beyond a prayer. And then there are more of us who have said, you know, I've, asked, I've, I've moved this thing up in, in, in the world a little bit. I've gone a little bit next level with it. But I haven't fully embraced the faith life that I'm called to be in. That I'm called to be. The, the life that I'm supposed to be living. And I want to give us all a chance to do that. But more importantly... If you have never prayed a prayer of saying, Jesus, I want you in my life. You know, Jesus said, I will acknowledge those who acknowledge me. That's my paraphrase. I will introduce those to my Father who have accepted me in their life. And we need to take a minute to do that. And I want to ask everybody right now to bow your heads and close your eyes. Not a peek, not a look around, not an eyebrow, eyebrow shrug, not anything, except for commanders. I want you to open your eyes and look around the room. And there are some of you who, who said, I've never done this established thing. I've never asked Jesus into my heart. 
I've never done that. And that sounds like something I want to be a part of. And if you are one of those people, I'd like you just to real slightly and slowly put your hand just a little bit in the air. Put it up by your ear or no peeking. I see peeking. Just give us a little signal that you want to say that prayer. Commanders, I see three or four hands. If you, if you see them too, there's a prayer right there you need to, you need to say. And we're going to say a prayer. Those of you who just put up your hands and said, I want this Jesus in me. We're going to pray a special prayer. And we're all going to pray this prayer together. Because I don't want to single anybody out. I don't want anybody praying out loud, to, you know, feeling awkward or anything like that, okay? We're all going to say this prayer together because we can pray this prayer over and over and over and over again. We can ask Jesus into our lives a hundred times, and he's going to hear that. Because not only is that the established thing, that's the escalate thing. So we're going to pray a prayer. Are you ready? Say, say yes quietly. Jesus, I ask you into my heart. I have messed up. There are things I do wrong. And I have sinned against you. But you have the power over sin. And I acknowledge that. And Jesus, I want you to come into my heart. I ask for your forgiveness. And I ask for you to infect me with your spirit. And on the count of three, really loud, we're going to say amen. One, two, three. Amen!